questions. Vous êtes tous les bienvenus à ce Wondoke de ce matin. Comme déjà je le disais, euh, au huitième jour du deuxième mois de la onzième année de Chanigouk, notre énième Wondoke, nous allons pouvoir le commencer comme tout le monde est déjà en place. Nous allons le commencer en donnant un peu le programme euh, qui est le programme habituel que nous avons toujours lorsque nous nous rencontrons ici, depuis que nous avons commencé euh, ce programme. Donc ce matin, je serai votre MC. Je suis Edwin Plekanov et nous allons euh, pouvoir euh, lire la promesse numéro 5 et numéro 6. Après nous être... Euh, après avoir offert notre prosternation complète pour ceux qui sont dans les églises et pour ceux qui sont devant leur petit écran comme moi, on va offrir une prosternation partielle. Et après, nous allons inviter, en prêtant la voix de Revenant les Douaba, qui est le président sous-régional de la partie sud du continent, qui va offrir la, la prière d'ouverture. Après quoi, nous allons inviter. Sejin Farid Ndiaye euh, pour les le Wundoke. Et après, nous aurons la réflexion sur, tout, sur ce Wundoke qui nous sera faite par euh, la présidente, euh, la vice-présidente. Et le président régional viendra avec euh, une partie assez particulière de l'enseignement de ce matin. Et là, après lui, nous allons inviter le Tchongye Kocher euh, pour nous aider davantage à comprendre et à avoir de la sagesse. Nous aurons les annonces qui vont suivre. Le président régional va venir fermer euh, cette, euh, va clôturer euh, cette séance de ce matin. Après, nous allons prier ensemble. Après avoir prié ensemble, nous allons dire au revoir aux parents célestes et aux vrais parents, à nos prestements partiellement. Et nous allons faire la photo de famille. Chef Famille Béni Central, où vous êtes, veuillons être prêts pendant que la technique nous aide à présenter la photo des vrais parents. Chonji in Champum Nimge Kyombe Paro Promesse des familles numéro 5. Notre famille souveraine de Chonilu promet, en se centrant sur l'amour vrai, de contribuer chaque jour par ses efforts à unifier rapidement le monde spirituel et le monde physique en tant que partenaire, sujet et objet. Numéro 6. Notre famille Souveraine de Chonibouk promet, en se centrant sur l'amour vrai, de représenter pleinement le parent céleste et les vrais parents, de mobiliser ainsi la fortune céleste et de transmettre tout autour d'elle les bénédictions du ciel. Adieu. Nous allons inviter, nous les doigts bas, pour euh, la prière d'ouverture. Uh, bonjour, bonjour, uh, program director. Uh, good morning, uh, our Chung Wiwan co-chair. Uh, good morning, regional president. Uh, good morning, Madam VP. And good morning, dear brothers and sisters uh, in Shin Africa. Uh, let's join together in offering a prayer. Good morning, our heavenly parent, precious, beloved, gracious true parents of heaven, earth, and all humankind. Heavenly parent, we come before you this morning, the 27th of February, 2023, continuing heavenly parents with the program, which started many months ago, preparing in particular, heavenly parents, your children, both second generation, Jacob's children and first generation, for the cosmic blessing centering upon our beloved true parents. Heavenly parents, we 
do not have adequate words to express our gratitude. But day by day, Heavenly Parents, every moment of our lives, we can identify your blessing. We can identify the heavenly fortune which we receive day by day. We know, Heavenly Parents, that you are biggest headache has been throughout history, throughout time immemorial. Your headache, Heavenly Parents, has been the destruction of the family. Because this is what started with the two people you created in the Garden of Eden. You have made efforts throughout history to bring us back to you. And Heavenly Parents, you worked and you toiled and you invested unceasingly with the heart of a parent in the shoes of a servant. But Heavenly Parent, we never understood you. We could never create the artistic relationship with you until in this age when we have got your son and daughter walking the earth, when we have got Heavenly Parents, our beloved true parents, not only teaching us about you in terms of theory, but also Heavenly Parents showing us substantially the presence and the manifestation of our Heavenly Parent. We therefore, Heavenly Parents, come before you with heart of repentance. We come before you with heart of penance. We come before you with hearts of contrition. But at the same time, Heavenly Parents, we present ourselves as proud sons and daughters of our Heavenly Parents and true parents. We present ourselves, Heavenly Parents, being aware of the path our ancestors have walked and Heavenly Parents standing on this firm and strong foundation created by our true parents. We therefore want to send first and foremost our love, our best wishes, our prayers, and our blessing to our beloved true mother in Chonjungun in Korea. Heavenly parents, that as we start this session, true parents can be in our hearts, true parents can be in our midst, that even though we receive guidance, heavenly parents, from our leaders, true parents can be in their hearts and minds to articulate the love from heaven. Heavenly parents, as the members of the Heavenly Parents Holy Community, we are settling in the cosmic channel gook. But Heavenly Parents, as true Father has warned us, the people of Israel entered the promised land of Canaan, but later on perished. Father says this in the speech, the value and the significance of the family pledge. And Father says, the Israelites copied the lifestyle of the Canaanites. And Heavenly Parents, as we settle worldwide as blessed families, as members of the Heavenly Parents Holy Community, we want to be aware that first and foremost, Heavenly Parents, the best offering we can offer to you is pure young people. Heavenly Parents who can receive the cosmic blessing. And this is what this program is about. Our brothers and sisters, blessed families around the world, we can see are preparing Heavenly Parents for this blessing in May. And we pray for your guidance, Heavenly Parents, in today's session, that whatever we receive here, we can realize and understand that this is you, this is your voice speaking to us. We are grateful and we present Heavenly Parents our best offering, pure second generation from you, pure uh, Jacob's children, pure first generation. We want to present them before you heavenly parents, that they can inherit this lineage of heaven because this has been your headache, this has been your heartache throughout history. We therefore want to once again express our sincere gratitude and we know, heavenly parents, that this can only be manifested by the results we give to you, by the people we bring in front of your altar. We can do many things, UPF, Women's Federation, we can do many things in Family Federation as well. But the best offering we can offer to you, Heavenly Parents, with pride and with sincerity, is to bring young people, pure young people, before your altar, for them to receive the blessing from you, from true parents, particularly at this time when mother is still alive. Heavenly Parents, therefore, we ask for your guidance. Uh, please be in our midst and guide this session and guide all other activities which we are doing in order to make this preparation so that when we go to Korea in May, we can proudly say to mother, this is the best we've been doing. This is the best offering we are giving to you, our beloved true mother, our beloved true parents. Uh, it is with this heart that we offer this session to you this morning. 
And we report and offer this representing all blessed families across the length and breadth of this continent of Africa. And we do so in our names, Flori and Muruti of the Lidwaba family, the blessed central family. Adieu. Adieu. Merci beaucoup, Reverend Lidwaba, pour cette prière très profonde. <coughs> Avant que nos vrais parents ne viennent nous parler, je souhaiterais que tous ceux qui sont ainsi, peut-être dans le salon, peut-être a dû oublier que nous sommes en plein Ounoké, où tout le monde nous voit. Vous pouvez fermer votre caméra pour un petit moment, bien vous arranger, porter des vêtements plus décents, pour permettre à ce que lorsque les vrais parents viennent pour nous parler, que nous puissions bien écouter la parole au niveau de leur personnalité. Donc, je répète, tous ceux qui sont ainsi peut-être au salon, ou alors vous êtes mal assis quelque part, vous avez l'autorisation de fermer votre caméra, de bien vous habiller et de pouvoir revenir et de bien s'asseoir car les vrais parents vont nous parler. Et ces paroles que les vrais parents vont nous donner ce matin sont tellement profondes qu'elles ont besoin que nous puissions bien nous asseoir confortablement et écouter les quelques minutes qui vont nous parler. Merci. Donc, nous allons donc inviter Sejin à lire le Wundoke de ce matin. Nous allons utiliser sa voix pour lire les paroles de, notre, de nos vrais parents pour nous tous ce matin. La technique peut nous aider à présenter le Wundoke. Merci. Bonjour à tous nos très chers leaders ainsi qu'à la communauté présente. À présent, je vais faire office de lecture. Chambou Mokyong. Le, le Undoke de ce matin sera tiré du livre 4, Le salut par la sainte bénédiction du mariage. Chapitre 1, Aperçu de la bénédiction du mariage. Section 2, Qualification. Les normes et les conditions. Dans la bénédiction du mariage, c'est le ciel et vos parents qui décident de votre partenaire. En d'autres termes, le père d'Adam, Dieu, devrait décider qui sera votre partenaire. En ce sens, la tradition du mariage, telle que pratiquée en Corée, est une méthode très proche de la loi céleste. Dans la tradition coréenne, vous ne pouvez pas vous, vous, ne pouvez pas vous marier sans It's la your permission. permission. This is absolute. Therefore, if there is someone you come to like, you have to report it to your parents right away before saying that you like someone. Some person, you must get approval from your parents. At that point, with their permission, you are allowed to date that person. If you date someone and report everything, it is not a sin. However, dating someone without reporting it is not acceptable. The most precious blessing is when a pure woman and a pure man get married within the will of heaven. That makes God happy. Such people have the greatest fortune in the whole world. Such people have the foundation to be successful at anything in the whole world. On the other hand, those who could not remain pure will be filled with such regret that their whole being will be in turmoil and they will feel the need to repent to such a degree that all of heaven and earth will be turned upside down. They must purify their minds and bodies and say to God, Father, I am confused with shame. What should I do? Then God will say, Yes, I know your heart. I will forgive you. I am happy that you are striving to transcend that painful state. You should participate in the marriage blessing only at the point at which you have earned the sympathy of God, who knows everything and whose forgiveness endures with you, within you. Usually, ideal things are not ideal things are to be found not in uh, the here and now, but in the future. What can we call an ideal? marriage partner a marriage is not ideal simply because the partner the partners like each other you and your partner are ideal for each other 
based upon your ability to give birth to an outstanding descendant. This ideal can be realized when two very different people are joined together. From heaven's point of view, what kind of people, what kind of person would be the best, would be the most ideal partner? The best result is produced when two people who are extremely different, that they hate each other, eventually come to really like one another. If you are willing to take such a difficult path for God and his will, blessings will come to you. This is the complete reverse of the secular view of marriage. If you are grateful to receive a person who is your opposite and you say you will love this person completely, with God's love, no matter what kind of man or woman he or she may be, God will be happy to let you marry such a person. I have blessed a number of members this way. If they can live in unity, their children will be great masterpieces. If one generation is difficult, the following generation is blessed. You should think that your ideal partner is to be found not in heaven, but in the dungeon of hell. You have to look at your bride or bridegroom in this way. The marriage blessing is not for the sake of just the people standing there together in the ceremony. Each of these men and women should have such a standard that they are qualified and capable of establishing without fail a new family that represents their clan, people, nation, and world. The family of Mr. Kim, for example, does not exist for the sake of the Kim family, but represents his people and nation and even the world. Without such a family, the marriage blessing cannot be realized. Adam and Eve, the ancestors of all human beings, were not just two individuals. They were at the origin, they were the origin of history. Their deeds were not to have ended with just them. Through them, a new family, a new clan, new people, a new nation were to have come into being. The marriage blessing is the place where such a worldwide foundation could be determined. Adieu. Adieu. Merci beaucoup. Nous allons pouvoir acclamer nos chers et parents. Adieu. Thank you very much. We will now give a big round of applause for our true parents for this uh, truly wonderful um, words that will guide our lives and uh, that of many many coming generations. Thank you very much to uh, Sejin, um, whose voice we used this morning to read the word. And so we will now receive um, the vice president. As I was saying, we'll have three um, interventions this morning. We'll have that of the um, regional vice president, then um, the speech of our regional president, and then that of the Johnny One co-chair. So let us uh, put our hands together to receive Vice President Mika. Okay, yes, good morning. Uh, good morning to our uh, 21 co-chair. Uh, bonjour. Donc, bonjour à notre... And good morning to all of our uh, dear leaders of regional directors, national leaders, and to all of our blessed family members and brothers and sisters present. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. I hope you're all feeling well as we begin a new week. And uh, also this morning marks Anshiel, so a new week uh, really centering on our tradition. So I really... Um, us that uh, we can really prepare to begin this week with uh, with our heavenly parent and true parents. So it's uh, great that we can come here as a region to begin also this uh, day and this week together. So my sharing today will be a reflection of the Hundake, uh, just that the Hundake that we read. Um, so I really feel that uh, this is a very well shared by our true parents. I was uh, really feeling recently as I'm preparing for a lot of um, content related to the blessing, how amazing our true parents content is. Um, it's so uh, detailed actually already. There's so much there 
in uh, in our true parents' words, and very practical also. And I really feel that uh, I feel I've been feeling very grateful uh, more and more as I'm kind of realizing actually the great essence of uh, true parents' words that we have in relation to um, the blessing. As I'm preparing, you know, for the blessing in relation to relationships, in relation to even our perspective on how we should um, see things and and how things should be. So I'm very grateful. I've been feeling very grateful um, around this and uh, very uh, inspired by our true parents' words um, recently, more more and more. So I just also wanted to share that. Uh, for today's sharing, I feel there were um, three main points. I feel it was really um, expressing for me uh, the need for God to be present, uh, true parents to be present, vertical um, connection first to be present before engaging in any in any horizontal relationship and I've been feeling that this is really the tradition that we are expressing and it was the tradition that was meant to be from the beginning but because we lost that vertical relationship uh, our all our other relationships became horizontal just horizontally based and if we look at that of the you know the result of that as we can see in the world today actually every every horizontal relationship has its challenge um, now because the vertical is missing you know i really feel that you know the explanation the explanation of the, the fall expressing how even the first human ancestors because of their lost connection with heavenly parent then their relationship with each other um, created relationships now of their children who also couldn't uh, even connect and really live as true brothers. And then this continued now to uh, all relationships. And so I feel before anything else, uh, before even preparing or even thinking about um, the relationship of a horizontal relationship, it's really important to really look at what is our vertical relationship. And of course, with heavenly parent and true parents, with our parents even, you know, healing that relationship, whatever challenge or feeling that is there, I really believe for especially a second generation um, growing up or children growing up in our movement, it's very important also to heal or to understand how to heal that relationship uh, that we have with our parents if there is some uh, challenge there or conflict there. Um, or if even if there's not, at least start now creating even a stronger relationship because that prepares you for the preparation for now entering into the relationship of conjugal love. So this is one reflection I really felt. It was mentioning in English, it says that, you know, if after true, um, after we share with our parents and the parents accept, then we can go and and date and meet the, uh, you know, the person that's been accepted. I feel because of the English connotation of dating, it seems like, okay, once that dating is just going out and, and uh, engaging with your um, spouse and then uh, relating in that way. But I really feel my understanding of dating from our, tra from our tradition is centering on first our, of course, our report to our parents, but then also that communication with each other with that vertical uh, connection there, you know, not removing that, not hiding that. I think dating can be seen also like just on our own, but I feel for me, the communication part uh, before you enter even in commitment is centering you still on the vertical connection that you have, reporting even that relationship to your parents, reporting uh, what you did, reporting where you're going. This kind, this is still needed. Uh, whereas now when we look at the world, the way they see dating is just on your own and uh, with, your, with your partner. So I also felt that we have to uh, really understand this point and we are creating the true tradition. We are creating the true centering on our relationship with true parents, heavenly parents and true parents. We are creating the true culture around man and woman relationship. I really always feel like we've learned that from the wrong textbook. The world has learned that from the wrong textbook about love. So we are learning it from the right textbook. So that's really one reflection I had. And the second reflection I also feel is you know, True Parents was mentioning how important the blessing is and how much God uh, really wants to give it to everyone. And we may be in a situation where we've made a mistake, and it was mentioning that in the words today, but 
what is important in that regard, in whatever situation you may be in, is the importance of truly repenting, truly saying, you know, understanding and saying, sorry, you know, with all your heart, that this is how you feel and this is what you've done and bringing it out to the open to heavenly parent, truly. And um, this is when heavenly parent can say, yes, I, you know, I can forgive you. This is when heavenly parent can bring you now on the right pathway. So in many cases, when we um, make a mistake, we often want to hide it. This is actually a fallen characteristic that we've inherited because that's what happened at the beginning of creation. But that's where Satan can work more to bring us into more and more pain, more and more problems because we hide it. So one important point I've always felt, uh, we just, everything that we go through, no matter how shameful we may feel to share it with our parent or share it with a parental figure, a central figure that can help us, we have to report. We have to share it. Maybe reporting sounds, you know, difficult. Just share it, you know, artistically connect with someone uh, who is in a position to receive it as a central figure and share it because that's the only way God can work. God can only work with the base, the, co the connection that we make, the responsibility that we make, that small step that we make to decide, are we going to relate or make a condition for Satan to work or are we going to make a condition for God to work? God can't do anything in that without that because that's the environment we're in. Satan is still in existence and our responsibility is to make that step for God to work, the conditions for God to work. So the first condition for God to work is reporting, making it clear and uh, repent, and then and then from that receiving the guidance and of course repenting, you know, seeing the what you did, not accusing. Usually the first thing that happens when we make a mistake, sometimes we even accuse, oh, it wasn't me, or it was this person, that's why I'm in this situation, even though we accept it's a mistake, but we still kind of accuse. So that's again characteristics of fallen nature. So how to remove that is truly first making that base for God to work. And God wants to work. God wants to bring uh, forgiveness to all of us. And uh, with our true parents also, we can see the special grace uh, has been given a few times already. And um, I feel though, even this, sometimes we kind of have taken it now like it's a right. Oh, okay, now I'm, I can get special grace one day. So, you know, and we just wait for that day. But actually, I feel that day will never come to the people who just wait. But I feel the day will come to people who prepare. You start preparing now. You start repenting now. You start making the right conditions of reporting now what has happened. Then when the special grace comes, truly that will be a grace for you. But if you don't prepare, even when the special grace comes, I feel it won't be there for you. You may not even see it. You may not even feel it. And you may not even really receive the grace that will come with it. So that's also something I also want us to feel and remember because today's very sharing really shared how much God wants to forgive us all, but the need for that repentance, the need for that sharing um, and reporting and obviously really creating that pathway for us to start preparing is needed. So again, this is an important message that I feel really can, I can relate with. And the second, the third point is Actually, how, you know, the blessing is not just for now and, you know, many just now, just our relationship now. It's also for the future. And True Father was mentioning sometimes met, matching people, not just for the relationship of the man and woman now, but because that uh, relationship will bear, you know, extremely great children for heavenly parent. So we may feel like our relationship is just for me, but actually it's more than that. It's like, uh, it's therefore bringing now God's children into the world and bringing a, a creation of life centering on heavenly parent and our ability to create descendants who are great for heavenly parent, I feel also is a great honor that we can uh, be very proud of having. So we may feel the instant now present is uh, very important because that's where we're living in. But we also need to consider that this relationship growth is not just looking at us now, but looking at our future, our descendants, and what we will be able to bring and great honor to our um, descendants from this relationship. So again, looking from God's perspective is important and creating that relationship uh, with knowing that this relationship that God has given me is not just for me, but truly for 
my future, for my family's future, for my, my descendants' future, and uh, it will bring a lot of blessings that we may not see in the present moment, but truly our faith and our, and our practice and our consistency, completely accepting what God is giving to us, that sincerity definitely brings offerings and blessings to those that come. So I wanted to share these three points uh, reflecting on today's Hundake. I feel it's very clear. You may have received much more than what I just shared today because it was very clear on uh, the blessing from True Parents' words, which I also am very grateful that we have such precious, precious words. So that's how I would like to share and end my reflection today. Thank you so much for listening. And let us really have a blessed week. And I know there's a lot of content coming from our regional president, John Nguyen Co-Chair. And uh, I would like to leave the floor and uh, allow them to, to share with us, which I'm also excited to, to hear. So thank you. And uh, God bless you for this morning, this week. OK, thank you. Merci beaucoup. Uh, thank you um, very much to our regional vice president, thank you for um, your reflection. I wouldn't know uh, what to say more than uh, just to ask uh, um, for us to connect this reflection to what our regional president is going to um, share with us this morning. And so we'll welcome with a big round of applause the regional president for um, his intervention. Thank you uh, to our dear MC for uh, giving me the floor this morning. It is uh, true that our um, sharing, as you just uh, said, will go the same line as a uh, original vice president. Before everything, I would like to greet um, original um, our one co-chair, our regional vice president, all the sub-regional um, directors, national leaders, parents, and all responsibles of uh, providential organizations without forgetting our beloved children. The aspect that I wanted to talk about this morning um, Maybe we should. We need a bit to come back on, uh, of course, the value of the blessing and uh, the importance of uh, reporting to the central figure. But the aspect of uh, the blessings conditionality, because the blessing is conditional. Why? Because without, um, because God gives the blessing. But to preserve this benediction, totally. But to perpetuate. The blessing, it depends to which percent I receive the blessing, to which percent I give it value, to which percent am I trying to perpetuate it. And uh, sometimes the blessing comes like this big um, reservoir where each of us have to make an effort to um, take the quantity of water that is necessary for uh, my family. So let's uh, suppose that I take uh, a pipe of uh, this diameter and then the other one who is uh, digging a, um, a canal and uh, the quality of uh, water or the quantity of water that each person will receive from this big reservoir will depend on the efforts and on what I'm doing to receive uh, such a quality and quantity of water. So it is the same blessing, the same water, but the quantity and quality and the efforts, efforts are different. And so I should not complain if I see that the, the, the other person's water is more pure than mine or the quantity that they have is greater than mine, but I also should not uh, just stay where I am, say, even if it's little, it's still a blessing. 
And at that moment, the results that will go from generation to generation will be different from what I want. And so, once again, I would like, uh, if uh, I'm allowed, to share my screen on uh, this eighth point of uh, our sharing. Voilà. Uh, huitième point, la bénédiction. So the eighth point, the um, conditional blessing. The blessing is, the blessing is conditional. Why? Because just as I said, our true parents are giving the blessing one to one hundred percent, but it depends on uh, the efforts that I did to receive the blessing. But the blessing comes on the foundation of uh, our ancestors, but also what our life has been. So here, this uh, graphic represents the different branches of uh, sins that our ancestors, our forefathers have uh, committed. And uh, we are connected to it, whether we like it or not. So for example, um, the sin of falseness, disbelief and rebellion. Sometimes we are in that situation without even knowing it, without knowing that we are in the situation. Yet for the blessing that our true parents are giving us to have its true value for the blessing that our true parents are giving us, be able to act as well as it should, we should be able to make an effort, an effort to cut the branches. So you may think maybe as blessed families, um, we may not... Uh, um, steal anything, but we are told that not giving uh, the tithe is stealing in a way. So when we do not answer, for example, the demands of our true parents, and uh, even if we doubt, we have all those branches that are uh, stuck to us. Sometimes we are part of Satan's family without knowing it, um, Satan's nation without knowing it. And uh, when we act and we see the reality that's around us and we start to just uh, comply with it, the um, sin of Satan's tongue, the way we talk, Many times we've asked blessed families as we, uh, when we meet with them, we share, for example, uh, that morning at five in the morning, we share. Um, and then the first thing we do when we meet um, parents uh, or a member of the Heavenly Parents Holy Community, when you wish them a good morning, ask, um, good morning, how is everyone at home? Are we asking them the first question? Are we sharing with them oh, what uh, we read in the Hunuke at home this morning, for example? Yet we sometimes feel uh, fall into criticism and such aspects. And that language, if my blessing is received at one percent, there are still this mix of uh, conditions that are around me. And uh, if I cannot liberate myself from it, I'll stay in Satan's um, hands without knowing how to get away from it. If it's that, we need to know if it's 1%, 30%, 70%, or 95% that we receive the blessing because our true parents give the blessing to 100%. 
And in the principle, we know that God has already done 95% of his part of responsibility. And we only have 5%, and those 5%, the principle says, is 100% of human beings' efforts that needs to be done so as to commune with God and succeed in what we want to do. So without accomplishing all those com conditions, because uh, that's why I was uh, I was saying it is linked to uh, what we just read and the commentary that our, our regional vice president just uh, um, did. What are the efforts? What are the efforts that we are doing to fight? For example, we are gathering in the morning and we are chasing Satan's um, tongue, Satan's language, because in our mouth there is only the truth of our true parents based on uh, the blessing, based on what we have received, what we want to share, doing our best so that our offerings are pure offering. And so the efforts that we need to do to cut all those branches that are, are, are allowing Satan to invade us, we need to do all those efforts because we need, we need it. We need to accomplish a part of responsibility, each and every one of us. We need to accomplish our responsibility as family, as members of the Heavenly Parents Holy Community. That's why we said we need to come together, three generations, together as parents, our blessed central families, our, with our children, to see how we can fight against um, that issue so that we may have a blessing worthy of uh, faith. In this period in which the only begotten daughter of God will be dedicating the temple that was so waited for by saints and sages. And so we need to purify ourselves to be with her at that moment. And the quality of a, a blessed marriage depends on all of that. So the quality of the marriage, for example, the quality of a marriage, um, a blessed marriage depends on, for example, our degree of alignment and unity with the heavenly parents and our true parents. We are able, let's say, to um, have that four position foundation with sincerity and honesty, and that will give the results that our true parents are waiting for us. For us. The wish of our true mother, the only begotten daughter of God, will be realized. And it also depends of, on uh, um, the quality of life before the blessing, as our Vice President was saying, for the grace, for example, you should not wait. Oh, I have nothing to do. Uh, I'm already in this situation. And then I just have to wait when the grace will come. But that grace, how is that grace going to find you? Where is it going to find you? In what situation? You need to, even if it's given, you need to find a, a way to inherit it truly. Because if you just receive it that way, it is as if you, um, it's like a fraud in a way, because you're inheriting a grace that you did not work for. And so you need to be worthy of receiving it. And to receive it, you need to prepare yourself with a quality and an understanding of the principle. The understanding of the principle is extremely important because it is the word. At the start, it was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. And so our true father is in the spirit world. Here on earth, we still have our true mother, and our true father has given the eight manuals in which you have the condensed 
version of everything and the divine principle that is the basic teaching, a principle that we define as the basic teaching that gives answer to every single fundamental question linked to human life. Old fundamental questions linked to human beings. We need to understand it in the practical life of the principle, not just understanding the principle, and sorry to repeat it as a parrot, but we should leave the principle. We can understand it and teach it well, but to leave the principle, it is an entire principle that should characterize us. Because if we cannot live a life of principle, then we are like a, an empty um, barrel. So it's after having that, uh, having lived that uh, life of alignment, having that quality of life before the blessing, having the understanding of the principle, and now living a practical life of, of uh, principle, then we should do the efforts for each other, for the couple to create unity. I should not be looking for a partner that I love, um, externally speaking, but a husband that is um, the right one for me. And I should make of uh, that the man that I'm given, my husband for eternity, and the woman that I'm given, my wife for eternity. And the blessing is the most eloquent proof of filial piety. Because through the blessing, we receive the son or daughter of God and true parents. For whom? we can sacrifice ourselves without limit. And I, I've always said it, we've always insisted on it. You don't come to uh, the church to find a husband, but you come to receive the blessing and you will be receiving the son or the daughter of God. And I should be able to love them, to sacrifice for them so that I would have created a relationship of love with uh, the heavenly parents in that way. And the blessing is also accepting the choice of our true parents or our parents in matching. And it is a proof of our filial piety to God because the parents and all the other people have received the authority from God in receiving the blessing, you accomplish, by receiving the blessing, we fulfill the heavenly parents wish to see his children realize by, the, realize by their union, the ideal of creation. Because the ideal of creation is only accomplished when the perfect man and the perfect woman are united, centered on God. United, centered on, on God, accomplish um, the four position foundation to such a degree that Satan cannot even try to destroy it. So to receive the blessing is to engage in marriage life by embracing the principal view of the marriage. We go to the blessing because there's an entire value that the principal give to the blessing. That process of restoration to eliminate um, the original sin, to build model families, families without sin, and to give birth to sinless children, <laughs> to restore humanity, and come back to the original Garden of Eden, where Adam and Eve should have lived as brothers and sisters, then husband and wife, then perpetuate uh, families of goodness and build a world of goodness that we call the kingdom of God on earth. And the children good can only be substantial when we engage ourselves in 
this couple's life that embrace the point of view of the uh, the marriage, uh, the principal point of view on marriage. Absolute love, absolute faith, absolute obedience. A better way to manifest our filial piety to true mother is to agree to receive the blessing that is the manifestation of the heavenly parents' love. In the Unification Church, the blessing is an important step in the life of faith. As youth, as parents, we cannot claim to serve true parents properly and refuse to receive their blessing in marriage. We cannot always shout, we love our true parents, we love our true parents, we love true mother, but we are not willing to receive the blessing of our true parents under our parents' authority when we do not want to receive the blessing of uh, natural parents according to the customs of uh, the, the heaven parents holy community and so we are people who are fated to also become true parents we are fated to become like true parents because they gave us the power the ability to pray in our name to bless other people all the way to blessing even our children and so if we cannot be available to offer to have that quality offering to give joy to our true mother then we are far away where she is always telling us proclaiming us, proclaiming to us we need i need you to unite with me to be united with me these miracles cannot be accomplished unless through the blessing. And I need to recognize uh, Rivan Gadova's profound prayer, who kind of mentioned that we can do what we can, what we want to do, organize conferences and summit, but if we cannot offer on the altar our children, if we cannot offer our spiritual children and our own children to our true parents, then we are far, far away from their hearts because we are far from accomplishing God's will that we know and for which we have sacrificed our lives, we have engaged ourselves so as to accomplish it, substantialize it on earth. And so, dear uh, Blessed Central families, I would like to thank you for your attention this morning. This is the little that I wanted to share with you as a reminder um, for this new week. I say and I thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, regional president. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Nous n'allons pas faire de commentaires. Thank you very much, regional president. We are not make any comments because everything was said. And uh, to connect uh, this to what the Chanyuan co-chair is going to share with us uh, this morning. We would like to uh, join our hands to welcome him. And uh, before joining, um, and before uh, receiving him, I would like to mention that uh, Mama Mary Kamara is also among us. And we would like to greet her and uh, tell her thank you for being among us this morning. And so, dear Blessed Central families, let us uh, put our hands together to welcome the Chunwan Co-Chair, Ervan Bakari Kamara. Thank you. Thank you, uh, General Secretary. I'm grateful that uh, you can give us this uh, floor. Wow, it's amazing today's uh, Undukwe is quite uh, refreshing and at the same time is uh, boosting boosting our humility and boosting our ability to receive more and more grace and move faster quicker of course and with great result thank you regional president president kadima for elaborating so well 
the conditional blessing, the meaning of it, because that is sometimes forgotten. Yeah, it's forgotten that when you receive the blessing, does it? I got it. But in reality, we don't have it yet. We are preparing to get it and to live according to the blessing. And to be honest, this uh, uh, word was so inspiring and it's so true. Yeah, I think uh, regional president, vice president, yeah, today are yeah, tuned together as usual to make sure Heavenly Parent Holy Community receives the necessary nourishment. Uh, we shall take that very seriously. We are very uh, sensitive if we are malnourished physically and become sick. But we are not sensitive if we are malnourished spiritually. We don't even realize that we are getting sick. So that's the danger of it. It's more than cancer. So that's why uh, that's a regular Pundukwe with so much input uh, with all of you, uh, all the leaders, all blessed families and uh, children together. That the greatest gift we can receive from heaven. So thank you once again. And uh, let us uh, today use this since we are beginning the week and to move and jump further as much as possible to make our true parents, a true mother proud. So today I wanted to go a little bit more practical, some practical things, but uh, in reality is to report uh, it's in relation, to, in relation to the convention happened last Thursday night, which was uh, Friday morning here. Uh, there, there was an event, which was the convention of uh, the elders, international elders round table to come together to support uh, True Parents Providence. And uh, Unfortunately, not so many people could come, I think because short notice, uh, and uh, if it's short notice, we were not so many. I think the general secretary were fighting to try to bring everyone at the last minute. But uh, of course, it was very challenging time in Africa. So many people couldn't come and uh, either they didn't know or connection or whatever. So I felt it was very informative to support our activities and also the understanding of how we are working together with the regional president, vice president, with all of you. These are uh, 3J working together to consolidate our understanding because one thing also for human being, he can feel, have a faith, but also you need some understanding uh, to have a strong motivation. So I will not talk much about it. I just want to present it. Uh, Dr. Yun also have a, a, sh a short video about it so that we can see that, we can see the connection and uh, what Trumara want to, has been always uh, wanted to promote and what we are doing that really this is the right track. Uh, this uh, three G, uh, three generation working together, actually for every level, not only for the blessing. So that is uh, something I wanted to to report. And so what will happen? I will ask again Mrs. Barrow to share and read it and present a Dr. Yun video, and I make short conclusion. So please be attentive because I will not comment too much about it. So thank you. I already discussed with the regional president last night. We are waiting almost every day, regularly, vice, regional president, vice president. And I really share this is something, since not so many people came to just have a glimpse of it, and it consolidate our understanding how we are working now together. So please, uh, Mrs. Barrow, can you present? So the background, uh, an introduction, and also Dr. Yun video. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Chairman. The Elders Roundtable. Backgrounder. The Convention for a Proposal to Launch the Elders Roundtable for a Heavenly Unified World 
was held on February 24, 2023 at the HJ Cultural Center in Korea and broadcast live. Today, there are demands for new values and practices for a sustainable future in the midst of global crises such as aging, low birth rates, and climate change. The experience and wisdom of our elders can give important insights for such integration. We want to launch the Elders' Roundtable as a venue for macro discourse, seeking solutions to the problem of the elderly while urging the solidarity of elders throughout the world. This organization, at the center of which are the Think Tank 2022 experts, gathers the wisdom of specialists in its field, including politics, economics, religion, and media. We wish to contribute to the realization of a warmer and more inclusive society through the position of grandparents in each family and the role of elders in society. Introduction. On this auspicious day, the six associations, IAPP, IAPD, IAED, ISCP, IMAP, and IAAP come together to bring together the wisdom of elders for the launch of the Elders' Roundtable. Two Mother has worked to bring together various nationalities and leaders of civil society for the realization of the world of peace, as well as the peaceful reunification of the Korean Peninsula. True Mother is bringing together a new wave of change to help the various nations of the world taking interest in the peaceful reunification of the Korean Peninsula and also the Asia Pacific Union and the Africa Union, building together a community centering on the ideals of interdependence, mutual prosperity, and universal values, a world of lasting peace indeed, to expand the model of the three generations working together. To realize the world of lasting peace and a peaceful reunification of the Korean Peninsula, we need to focus on the most important unit of society, which is the family. The family is the building block of the world of peace. Two mother mentioned that we should attend God as a parent and three generations of the grandparents, the parents and the children who represent the tradition, the present and the future work together to build healthy families. Based on that tradition of attending heaven through Yojong families, we can build healthy societies. Elders can teach about wisdom of the past for the sake of future generations. They are the protectors of tradition and wisdom. They play an important role for the building of a healthy, happy societies. They can be the model for your young families. When three generations work together, we can see an important role for elders in advancing ideals of happy, healthy families and build a traditional societies based on strong families working for the sake of healthy, happy future generations. When we realize this ideal of three generations working together to build healthy societies, we can indeed build a world of lasting peace, a peaceful and heavenly unified Korea. We can realize one family of humanity under God. When the world is in confusion, we always need a guide. When the world is in despair, when hope is needed, we always ask elders for wisdom, for guidance. At a time when there are so many trials and tribulations in the world, we look to the works and achievements of our elders to guide us through these difficult times. Now the time has come for us to work and pave a path of peace and harmony. This is the path where the elders can shine the light on the path to go ahead in order for humanity to embrace the values of the family, to form one family of humanity. 
The role of elders is indeed very important. One world of one human family. Elders are the pioneers of the world of peace and unity. Thank you. That is the introduction. So just we follow uh, Dr. Yuna's uh, message, uh, which is very informative. Please uh, be uh, attentive. Thank you. So while, while this is pre presenting that video, I think, I don't know who got it, but it, it looks like the technical people got it. This is just to uh, bring to our attention uh, this uh, uh, what, how we are working together now with regional president and uh, vice president. It's not something invented, it's a true mother's view. And uh, you could see even the, in the memo in 2020, and that is uh, what has been uh, elaborated well. So where is the video? Um, Penta will be sharing the video, Chairman. Okay, thank you. So please, uh, no comment, uh, please listen to yourself. This is what happened uh, last time. Uh, today's um, launch uh, of the Elders Around Table takes place under the auspices of Think Tank 2022 and the International Summit Council for Peace, as well as the Korean Senior Citizens Association for a Heavenly Unified Korea. Today's gathering is a convention to propose the launch of the Elders Round Table, and uh, later on, uh, these associations uh, will also be promoted in all the other regions of the world, such as the um, North America, Europe, South America, Africa, U Asia Pacific. And uh, in May, we will have the launch of the Elders Roundtable in Korea during the Summit and Leadership Conference 2023. Dr. Hak Chahan does not particularly like the term um, old person. That's why she proposed uh, the term elder. And uh, the Elders Roundtable will officially be launched in May during the Summit and Leadership Conference 2023. Today, we are gathering as a convention to propose the launch of the Elders Round Table together with uh, elders from Korea as well as uh, uh, international leaders from about 100 nations worldwide who have joined us live. And uh, let us give another round of applause to all the leaders uh, who have gathered here. Beloved leaders, let's welcome one another with a round pandemic. We can still see that there are many challenges and uh, issues to be resolved around the world. It is difficult to bring about a world of true peace and unity. Rather, everywhere we see, we can see the seeds of conflict and discord uh, expanding. The fight for hegemony between the superpowers of the world are leading a new Cold War era. For example, the invasion of Ukraine by Russia. There is also the fight for resources around the world. There is also a fight centering on values and the tsunami of the conflict between China and the US is really bringing a lot of concern to peace-loving citizens around the world. It is within this framework that Dr. Hak Chahan Moon, the co-founder of the Universal Peace Federation, has proposed that the way to resolve all of the conflicts around the world and bring peace and harmony in the world is to bring the world together centering on the values of interdependence, mutual prosperity and universal values. It is when we recognize our creator as the heavenly parent that we can advance the ideal of one family of humanity under the heavenly parent and realize the heavenly unified Korea and heavenly unified world. Under this uh, noble ideal, the Summit Council for Peace, the Parliamentarians Association for Peace, the Interreligious Association for Peace, the Media Association for Peace, the Business Association for Peace, as well as the Academicians Association for Peace, all were launched and come together to launch Think Tank 2022. Current and former heads of state from around the world all gathered on their world summits, rallies of hope, the Think Tank 2022 Forum, International Leadership Conferences, and numerous other events working with one ideal to realize a world of peace, peace on the Korean Peninsula, as well as a world of lasting peace around the world. In particular, last year in February, uh, out of 154 nations with diplomatic ties to North and South Korea. 
85 current and former heads of states gathered under the slogan of one peninsula, one people, one culture and expanded this to realize one earth, one humanity and one global culture of peace to realize a world of lasting peace and the universal peace charter was proposed and it is currently being reviewed for legislation in different nations around the world indeed it was a quantum jump when we look at the covid pandemic that is continuing and until yesterday the missile crisis from north korea the past year um, has really shown that there are still many issues that need to be resolved as well as uh, the invasion of Ukraine by Russia many issues from His Holiness the Pope to other well-meaning citizens really speak about the need to advance the ideal of peace but also to reform the United Nations to address these critical challenges and that is why the Universal Peace Federation advances the Universal Peace Charter as a charter where politics, religion, the media, academia and all the other associations and uh, areas of civil society can come together under the ideal of one family of humanity under the Creator, our Heavenly Parent Today, Korea in particular is afflicted by many issues such as low birth rates as well as uh, the aging population. There are many issues related to elders that need to be resolved. Furthermore, in order to realize one world of lasting peace, a world where there are no distinctions between demographics, but a world where the role of elders is respected, recognized and appreciated has been the motivation behind the launch or the proposal to launch the elders round table respected elders from around the world as you all know the role of elders is an issue that cannot just be solved with policies we see the development of science we see the um, development of medicine where people live longer years longer lives and since the 1950s uh, the population of Korea for example has been living longer and in the 1990s uh, in during the UN convention in Geneva the United Nations uh, has uh, declared that uh, October 1st would be the day of elders and since that year the day of elders has been celebrated worldwide furthermore in Korea also in 1997 a new law on welfare for elders and various uh, holidays have been established so that the uh, people can uh, take more interest in elders and also the day on uh, October 2nd has been uh, the day of elders and uh, on October 3rd has been a day to celebrate the welfare of elders and from 1998 the celebration of the day of elders has been celebrated furthermore a few years later the issue of elders has has been uh, shared worldwide because the United Nations report states that the world of elders will become a major issue in future years even now a fundamental solution to the aging populations of the world has not yet been solved we are now going into the age or era of a super aging population and we need to bring our wisdom together to offer a new role for elders to take care of uh, elders to provide better care respect but also to tap into the wisdom of our elders today I do not just want to discuss the role of elders as an issue of welfare or as an issue of policy I really want to approach the role of elders as a, a source of wisdom and also as the elders in the family who can play an important role in solving the issues in modern society and when we see elders as grandparents in healthy societies where the family is the building block of healthy happy societies then our elders have indeed a great role in promoting healthy happy families and happy societies as we grow older elders need to receive the interest and protection of members of society furthermore elders are also elders in society 
their wisdom, their experience, and as well as being custodians of traditions, customs, and knowledge can be passed on to future generations. It is indeed the role of elders to pass on this important wisdom to future generations. And when we look at this issue, we see that elders are not just targets for welfare legislation, but we needed to see elders as members of healthy, happy societies where they can be protected, where we can care for them. Furthermore, we need to provide a new vision on the role of elders in building peaceful societies. And what is really important is really to um, overcome some of the limitations and uh, discriminations existing in societies, nations, and other communities around the world, but also to gather our wisdom on providing an important role for elders. How we look at the rights and also um, the role of elders can really help to bring societies together, nations together, and realize a world of lasting peace as well as peace on the Korean Peninsula. Indeed, our elders are the heroes who built this country and have built the societies upon which we live. And therefore, I want to propose that uh, based on the Universal Peace Charter and uh, harnessing all of the different areas of society from politics, the economy, media, arts, religion, all of these areas can come together in recognizing the not just the holiness and the dignity of human beings, but also recognizing that uh, dis distinctions of uh, different areas of society based on gender, based on demographics, are not enough to solve these uh, uh, problems. We need to approach this issue not just from the point of view of human rights, but from the point of view of families. The true role of elders will only be understood when we see elders as members of the family, as grandparents, as the grandparents of our society. Rather than emphasize individual rights, we can really focus on the role of families. And of course, it is true that individual rights have played an important role in advancing the development of societies. But we also recognize the severe limitations of individualistic human rights. Many problems related to youth, to elders, and uh, other issues of society cannot be solved just on the concept of uh, rights based on the individual. That is why today I wanted to propose that we understand rights from the point of view of the family. Instead of understanding rights just in terms of individuals, we can really understand rights, especially with relations to elders, from the point of view of uh, family to solve problems of the family, to solve problems of society, especially to provide hope for the youth. We need to look at society as a, a one family, one familial community, that all families come together to form a society. And rather than look at rights in terms of each individual, we can look, understand rights as a family units. These family units come together to form societies. And uh, Reverend Sam Young Moon and Dr. Hak Chahan Moon have worked from an old, from since the early 1950s to advance the rights of families. All of us are born in families. Before we are an individual, we are part of a family. We are part of a community. And our identity comes from the families we are born in. And as we grow, and we become parents and we become grandparents and it is when we understand the value and holiness of the family we can experience the heart of children of siblings of parents and grandparents and that is why human beings are artistic human beings and that is why we feel and understand that our identities are formed within the family. It is when we experience the hearts of siblings, children, of parents, of couples, of parents and grandparents, then we can form new families, healthy, happy societies. Therefore, I would like to emphasize once again that the birth and the death of an individual does not begin as an individual alone and ends as an individual alone. It starts within a family and ends within a family. Therefore, today, as we look at the issues of an aging society, low birth rate, 
we should see all of these uh, in terms of how to solve family issues. Human beings are not born to be selfish, individualistic individuals, but uh, to be part of a family. And if possible, a family centered on the heavenly parent, our creator. From long ago, Reverend Dr. Sam Young Moon and Dr. Hak Chahan Moon have been advancing the ideal of one family of humanity under the creator, where all families can come together and uh, form healthy, happy families, expanded this uh, family unit to form happy societies, happy communities, and expand to the nation. And therefore, going beyond individualistic human rights uh, within uh, loving familial communities, we can support one another and uh, work together and advance the rights of families and support family-centered policies. When we look at the Declaration of Independence or the Human Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the rights of individuals were expounded and this has helped society develop. However, the time has come to solve the societal issues we are facing by advancing the rights of families and recognizing that our elders are our grandparents, that our elders uh, are deserving of our respect as children and our admiration. And that is why we see three generations of the grandparents, the parents and the children. And uh, through this discussion, we can really solve many of the issues uh, we are facing today. Let us uh, thank you very much. Let us, uh, as uh, children who attend uh, uh, the Heavenly Parent, let us all really embrace the ideal of healthy, happy families who live together as uh, families who are siblings to one another. Beloved elders of Korea, in Korea there is the expression, uh, it's like love flows, flows from the top to the bottom. It is an expression that love flows in one direction. But this expression uh, has a similar idioms in different nations around the world. And uh, this uh, wisdom, these wide words of uh, love expanding within the family from the grandparents to the children really can be implemented in our understanding of healthy, happy families in the world. It is when there is harmony between grandparents, parents and children. And if we expand this concept with grandparents being the elders of society, the parents being the adults in society and the children being the youth, the future generations of the world, then we can really see the importance of family values and family rights. And that is why today it is my humble call to all the elders from Korea and around the world to really play the important role of uh, conveying and sharing their wisdom, the traditions, the customs, as well as uh, the various uh, experiences they have had in building a better world, a world of uh, lasting peace. This will help resolve the issues between societies and also between uh, different generations. Indeed, a world of lasting peace will be possible. And I was so blessed to live in a family where I could attend my grandparents. And uh, today, I can also attend the peace leader, Dr. Hak Chahan Moon, the mother of peace. She is the elder among elders. It is indeed a great honor for me. And that is why, based on this model, we can realize a world of lasting peace. Let us recognize that our elders are our grandparents. Let us expand this ideal and provide a role for them to play in a society that is grounded in these family values. Dr. Hak Chahan Moon has mentioned that in order to renew the UN, the Universal Peace Federation, and it's the six associations, IAPP, ISCCP, and so on, will come together under Think Tank 2022. And among the heads of states, and among also the elders of the six associations, they will all come together in May of this year during World Summit and Leadership Conference 2023 to launch the Elders Round Table in Korea. All of you are invited to the launch of the Elders Round Table in Korea. 
and today's convention is to propose the launch of the elders round the table in particular 28 VIPs from around the world have uh, worked with UPF in the past let us give a round of applause for these elders for the work for peace and uh, lastly I would like to mention that uh, in May and September of last year I met with uh, President Macky Sall and uh, in uh, August I also met uh, Brigi Rafini, the former Prime Minister of Niger and in June and October I met uh, Prime Minister Hun Sen of uh, Cambodia. I've also met with uh, Excellency Pan Ki-moon and also met with various other uh, VIP such as Mike Pompeo, Honorable Pan Ki-moon and various other elders of society and uh, the reason I met them was to realize this vision of one family of humanity around the world. Right now the time has come for us to really solve the issues facing society and advance the values of the family and now we wanted to have the summits at the continental level. Over the past year, we worked tremendously hard to advance the values of the family and uh, Dr. Hak Chahan Moon has uh, advanced the ideal of three generations working together and uh, to launch uh, the Association of Families and uh, to launch the Asia Pacific Union and uh, this uh, vision was uh, uh, proposed uh, during the ASEAN summit and uh, in uh, Cambodia, Prime Minister Hun Sen of Cambodia uh, is uh, advancing this project through the Mekong Peace Park and uh, in May we will launch the elders around the table it is not just a vision but it really is a policy recommendation to realize a world of peace around the world but also to realize the peaceful reunification of the Korean Peninsula that is why today's convention to propose the launch of the elders roundtable is meaningful I want to thank you all and I would like to end my welcoming remarks here thank you for your attention You are muted. Okay, now they opened the door for me. Thank you. I think that was informative. Thank you uh, for your listening. I think uh, I will not say much. Yes, I want to connect that with True Mother's vision through the memo to make sure all leaders that should know, President Kadima and Vice President, are not inventing this. Uh, three generations working together. It was there a long time ago. That's why they tried to implement. Let us come together and understand and move on with a clear mindset, definitely to bring more results. So, you know, uh, what has been said in the memo when we have been appointed, all three, uh, Mrs. Barrow, can you show that? Yes, General. And that will, that will end. So the following is an extract from the International Headquarter Memo of October 14th, 2020, entitled Two Parents Special Directives, with the reference number Family Federation International 2020-094. Point number two, restructuring the global movement. Three, implementation of the regional Chombiwon system. In anticipation of the completion of Chon Wongong, in 2023 and the launch of Chonjongwon, each regional group will implement the Chonjongwon system to advance the firm establishment of the foundation for future generations and the efficient restoration of the regional group by fostering cooperation between first generation level leaders, elders, second generation level leaders, regional group presidents, and third generation level leaders regional group vice presidents. Regional Chonwi Won chairs are appointed accordingly. Point number four, administrative matters and other details. One, all personnel reassignments are retroactively effective from October 11th, 2020.
And that is the end. I just wanted to, uh, yeah, I can close this now. Yeah, just to bring our attention and connect because as I said from the beginning, have a faith is very great. Feeling of under, knowing something is absolutely necessary. But sometimes we can be stuck also if you don't understand. Uh, President Karima probably you know already, many people are asking why three generation, da, 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 many issues, but it's not new things. Thank you for your perseverances to really bring the, and su to support this and make sure uh, leaders and members are understanding as we go. It just uh, some kind of, uh, and also many other information in uh, Dr. Yoon's speech, actually. I will advise just yes, without comment. If you got time, anyone got time, just go there at the peace link and go through it. And uh, since we didn't have chance to go and to understand. So that is my short comment today, as usual. God bless you. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very Merci. much. Merci beaucoup. Uh, for the informative, as you said, is info it was informative for us to, to know exactly what happened uh, on the 24th. Of course, I was fighting to try to bring leaders in. It wasn't very easy, but at least we could be able to have 34, uh, 34 leaders who join at uh, that time. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, uh, Chao Thank pour, you very much, uh, Chao Co Chair, for um, this uh, very informative um, sharing. We really well understood the message, and we are sure we'll be sure to go back on Peace Link to listen to it well with attention. So the Peace Link is already there. We have the French, Portuguese, and English um, version. And those who speak well Korean also, the Korean version is, is also there. And so we will um, now come to the announcement. We are very close to the end of this morning's uh, program. We have uh, a few announcements, few important announcements here for um, all of us. So before asking then uh, the regional president to come uh, and give a word of conclusion, we will now come to the announcement. And then the first announcement here that we have is uh, Okay. The first announcement that we have is about a, a contribution that uh, we are truly grateful for the contributions uh, that we are given uh, for the temple. So if the technical team can help us uh, show the contributions that are already there. And so we want to push truly uh, all of us, so brothers and sisters, to uh, give more so last time uh, the youth were somewhere and I truly want to give them a round of applause because soon they'll get to the 10,000 uh, to 10,000 dollars so thank you for the youth with Zambia who is uh, uh, heading the list then Benin, DR Congo, Rwanda, Ghana and Nigeria and the other uh, nations. Now I'd also like to uh, precise that this will be updated also today because uh, I'm sure there are contributions yesterday that were sent. And also for uh, the families, we have uh, DR Congo who is heading the list with, uh, of course, there are a number of uh, members and then Zambia, Benin, uh, Congo Brazzaville, Nigeria, and the other countries such as Cameroon that is right next to uh, Nigeria and every nation are doing their best to send, to make if efforts so to help so that we can accomplish uh, the final goal. We also have six, we now have 67 days left for our 210 day condition to close. And for this condition to, before this condition to close, uh, this 210 day condition uh, comes to a close, we still have the seven minutes prayer and 12 bows. So 
we truly want to get to last level because we have all promised uh, to accomplish it. So we also have uh, as announcement here. Thank you very much, uh, technical team. Um, we also have as announcement that uh, the three days uh, matching process, 3G matching process has already started and it is uh, important for all the leaders of uh, the different uh, committees um, send for them to send the different list that uh, would will be asked of them and so the different committees already know uh, what we are talking about here and uh, we will also have uh, the blessing interview matching and blessing interview so during the next three days um the morning uh, on monday today uh tuesday tomorrow and uh wednesday the day after tomorrow so it was asked for the nations to send uh, the list uh, and also the form that uh, was uh, dutifully filled by the candidates we needed to have all those lists uh, yesterday if not if you haven't finished yet, haven't sent them, please send them today because the interviews are starting today. And uh, the website for the orientation has uh, uh, created uh, today and will be able to send that uh, website, uh, that list to uh, um, all of us. So the next uh, phase or the next course for the youth education will be on uh, Friday next uh, Friday, and we'd like to invite all the matched candidates, all, of course, first of all, all the matched candidates, all the candidates that are ready for the blessing, those who are in the matching process in any of the processes, or those who are entering a process, there will be a very important meeting at uh, 5 p.m. Um, and so all the second generation, uh, 27 years old and uh, more, yesterday we had a, a meeting, an important meeting with them and the parents, but uh, we also found uh, that uh, many did not come. And so the essence even of uh, this meeting could not happen. And so that's why a form was sent to all the nations so that uh, wherever we have uh, our singles, second generations, daughters of uh, 27 and uh, 27 years old and up may join, um, they can fill out the form uh, that we have sent and join because there is a link that will be sent to all those uh, candidates for, uh, for them alone because there is a certain number of uh, information that are private to those candidates that will be given to them in private as a said. So for all those who did not uh, fill out the form um, that we just sent in the chat and the national leaders also have it, uh, have the form. So if some of you have not yet received the form, please ask it uh, to the uh, national team. And so, dear uh, um, audience, this is where the announcement will be stopping today, and we will now receive once again um, the regional president, Reverend Kadima, for the closing remarks. Let's welcome him with a round of applause. Thank you very much um, to our general secretary for and giving me once again the occasion to conclude this morning's uh, session for this week. And so we do not have a lot to say. I do not have a lot to say if it's not to thank the Chonyuan co-chair, to thank our regional vice presidents and all the sub-regional directors, national leaders, uh, parents, um, and responsibility here present without forgetting our children 
for um, being among us uh, this morning. And once again, I would like to insist on the different memos that we are sending to the blessing organization committees. All the administrators, you have received the lists and you know what is asked of you that should be sent yesterday in the Sunday service. So we should make of it uh, like a mainstream uh, um, um, breaking news event, even if you'd like, because it is important to the preparation um, of our children, our children's blessing. Time is not with us. So to wait till the last minute, the last second is not good because when we do things um, hastily, many things are missing, many mistakes are made. And after we are, we'll try to see, to see to whom to, to blame. And as we said, this is a team effort. It is a chain type of work. So when uh, the chain links are not well um, put together, then the chain will not work. And if the chain is not working, then the gear is not moving. And so we need to work in harmony, in wisdom, in uh, complementarity for us to give a quality work, a professional work. So Africa should raise itself to a top of uh, old regions. And that's why we should, um, we know that in Africa, every nation have their own time. We need to avoid that kind of thing. Every nation have their own way of doing things, but here we are working as a family, an African family, the heavenly parents, holy community in heavenly Africa. Everything is heavenly, but being late is not heavenly. Being late is evil. We are talking about heavenly Africa. So the different committees, please hast, hasten yourselves so that you can send as early as this morning, things that we should have received as early as yesterday. So please send them. So if the things did not, if things did not arrive in time, then it creates many issues. And we say that those who are late are always wrong to try to justify themselves. Those who are late are always wrong in trying to find reasons to justify themselves. And so truly thank you for your attention and for your participation. And please do not forget to uh, after here, the seven minutes prayer and the 12 uh, minutes, um, if you do it, if you do them in the morning or in the evening, please do not forget. And we already sent a memo to remind you um, the day is left. So um, the countdown has started and we need to do our best so that for the few, the days that we, the, couple, the few days that we have left, we can do our best and we can be sure that everything has been clarified um, on, and hopefully everything has been clarified on the three generations and we do not doubt anything. So we can just engage ourselves for the final victory that is uh, certain. So thank you and have a good day. So thank you. Thank you very much, original president. It is time for us to offer a closing prayer, but uh, before closing, this uh, with this closing um with the unison prayer i would like to ask the technical team to uh, show us uh, the form that uh, um, we are talking about this form is truly important is if the, this form we do not we did not having have it it is very complicated the form is important because it allows for the candidates to agree to say yes i want to take part in the 3g matching Maybe there are many forms that are sent here and there, but so please, technical team, please show us uh, the form. The matching application form. So we truly need to see it. Uh, 
And so this is the form. Can we uh, zoom a bit on it so that we can explain a bit what it is? So this is the form and the form is very simple. You have here at the top, the application uh, form for the three generation matching. So you need to put the subregion, the mission nation. So um, at the, uh, the Cameroon mission, the Chad uh, mission. So the nation in which you are in, um, the family name, a given name, then the date of birth, then you have the date of birth and you choose whether you are uh, a brother or a sister. If you are a brother, you selection a uh, male. If you are sister, you check a uh, female. And so for us to be able to contact you, we ask you to put your phone number in which you are using WhatsApp. And if you are not using WhatsApp, then you put your father's. And if your father does not have WhatsApp, then you use your cousins. If your cousin does not have WhatsApp, then you use the leaders. And then you put your email because you'll be sent a certain num uh, a number of uh, guidances. And so since we want for it to be well done, there will be the matching interview. And in that interview, we gave the possibility to the people that you want uh, for them to interview you. There is the chairman co-chair, there is the regional president, there is the regional vice president. We have a the regional general secretary, we have the BFT regional, uh, regional BFT director, we have the sub regional uh, director, you have national leader, and also the national BFT director. So you can check which one you want to interview you. And after you have the question that is asking, do you understand and do you agree to go through the 3G? Uh, assisted parents matching process because there is one blessing but there is the 3g matching uh, uh, process and if you agree then you put yes and also do you agree and promise to follow all the official steps and conditions for the blessing then you put yes then since it is a matter of eternal life your parents sign the document and you also sign the document which means you agree and they also agree. Then you scan this and you send it and it needs to go to the regional uh, general secretary. If you don't have their number, you have the national, uh, you can ask the national leader, but it's better to send it to the national leader and the committee for them to send it to the regional uh, secretary, secretariat. And so we are starting the interviews today, but we haven't received all that we need to receive yet. So please uh, send them as early as possible. And so let us now come together and offer uh, a unison prayer as closing prayer. Let us pray.
Aju, Aju, Aju. Okay. Uh, merci beaucoup. Uh, nous allons maintenant... Thank you very much. And we will now conclude by saying goodbye to our heavenly parents and our true parents. Chongjin Chongmunimke Kyungbe Baro Glory and honor to our heavenly parents and our true parents. Thank you very much. We will now take a, a couple of pictures. And so it is a new day and uh, uh, Vice President has mentioned it. It is a day of Anchil. And so a day of Anchil should be joyful for the heavenly parents and our true parents. And so the technical team will help us and we will start with the, the little hearts. So long as we are on earth, we will always do this little heart. It is made for those who are here physically on earth and that we can see. So we have many, many pages today. So thank you for all those who stayed with us till the end. And thank you also to those who left before. We are truly grateful. Let us keep on smiling. All the smiles are here. Sometimes we do not even think, even in the time of intensity like this, we can still keep on smiling. Keep on smiling. It is truly beautiful to see. Wonderful. Now let us switch now to this heart. If you are husband and wife, you can show to all the children here how uh, united our hearts are just like the heart of uh, Papa Pascal and, o and Olive. They are very beautiful, but they cannot beat that the heart of uh, the original president because he is the center. So let us continue. Let us continue. Thank you, Ravan Tanui. Beautiful pictures. Thank you, Papa Augustin Gomsi. Beautiful with uh, a beautiful mama. Let us keep on smiling with the pose. Beautiful. Keep on. And even uh, the little of the, the Pakwita uh, family. Well done. Very well done. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear Blessed Central families. This is where we will be concluding with uh, this morning's um, session. Let us, let's not forget uh, the big... Uh, session of uh, Friday for our youth uh, education and uh, the interview of our children for today, tomorrow, and the day after, and also for uh, the session with uh, the sisters, 27 year old and up. Thank you. Thank you and goodbye.